Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fresh and Minus. What? Hi, Joe. Hi. <laughs> that was good, right? Yeah, that was, that, that was words, I that, think. <laughs> yeah, it was. Really really that, that, was, that was actually Eminem's rap god. Um, <laughs> the entire song. That was the entire <laughs> thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, even like, you know, Samalama Damalama. You see why I'm superhuman, what I gotta do to get it through you, I'm superhuman, innovative, and no matter what, so anything you say is bigger shit. Anyway, I'm done, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> I'm too, I was gonna say I'm too white for that, but it's Eminem, so I'm, <laughs> I'm actually the perfect amount of white for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what oh, we forgot to bad. do? We forgot to flip the camera screens out. Well, you better go do, do you want to go do that? No, oh, I right. fix it every week. You can fix it. <laughs> That's because week. you're the person who sets it up. And then you were just wrong. there for like 10 minutes getting the camera. Fine. You can do it. You can that's do it. Of your, that, <laughs> that's because of your dodgy <laughs> stand. My tripod? It? Tripod, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's not that dodgy. You just don't know how to use it. It's dodgy. Okay, well, go fix the thing and then we can continue. Um, anyway, so I'm going to use the next 10 seconds to talk about Red Dead Redemption 2 and then we're not, <laughs> then we're not talking about it again. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Joe's very excited. Actually, I have a couple things that I want to talk about. Today, I want to talk about video games. Um, yes. Like, a lot. Um, oh, yeah, I'm keen. Before we talk about Red Dead, mm -hmm. I want to talk about something else. Um, last week, after the episode, after we recorded the episode, <laughs> we, <laughs> for the first time in a very long time, played video games together, yeah. which was really fun. Um, but we ended up playing through the entirety <laughs> of the first Halo game from 2001. Yes. Um, it's one of my favorite games of all time. It was like the game that got me into video games. Mm. I still remember playing it on my very first laptop, like barely running it. Yeah. And like just being in awe of the game. Mm. Um, and so I have been talking about it for a couple of weeks now and I thought it was time to get Joe to finally experience mm -hmm. Halo 1 mm -hmm. in its entirety. We played the original version with no like... No, like not the anniversary version with all the texture updates and whatever because I've been complaining about that. So yeah. um, it was the original version with the original dialogue and the original music and the original everything um, with all its flaws and all. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> so Joe, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience playing the first Halo game almost 20 years later? It, it didn't feel like an old game. No. No. It felt like a game that came out like three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It, it blew my mind, honestly. And there wasn't as much jank as I thought there'd be. Yeah. I, like, I didn't even know where to start. Just start wherever? I, I also, like, I didn't know that much about Halo. Growing up, I, I had a PlayStation, so I yeah. never played it. I didn't have a PC. Um, so, wait, Halo wasn't on PC, was it? Uh, the f Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2 were on PC, and then all right. the other ones were just on console, which... Okay. Anyway... Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. So I never got to play it. And I thought like Call of Duty and Halo were similar. And so, yeah, I had no idea that there was this like really good story in the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> and and what actually what blew my mind most probably was the combat and like how how they interacted with each other and then with you as well. Like the Marines? Or no, no, like the... Oh, but like the, the the covenant and the elites. And yeah. Stuff. Right. 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 Yeah, because like uh, you know, I've played I've played like Modern Warfare Three campaign too many times. Yeah, me too. That can't, that can't, that's a really good campaign. It is. <laughs> um, and being like a twelve year old who didn't know anything different, I thought it was fantastic. Mm. You know, there was always that guy in that spot that would kill me, so I'd have to kill him first. But yeah. like in Halo, it was not like that at all. No. Yeah. It was all, it's all like they actually think and react to what you do. Yeah. And we were playing on normal as well, we should say. Um, if you play oh, okay. on legendary, they are way smarter. Oh, really? Like way smarter. Oh. Um, like they, they start adapting to you and stuff. It's crazy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. I, like it just, it, it blows my mind knowing that it came out the year after I was born. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost 20 years old. Yeah. It's like came out November two thousand one, right? Which is mental. <laughs> That's absolutely. And I finally played it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I was. It was also really nice for me to play with to play it through with someone for the first time because, you know, I, I this game is like seared into my brain. Like I mm. I remember, and it was really interesting because I I haven't played it in probably ten years now, 
And no. I remember everything on the whole. Like, I remember each level, but I couldn't remember how we got there. And, like, I couldn't really... Re- I couldn't remember the specifics. The first couple levels I knew, but, like, the back of my hand. Yeah. Like, pretty much up until the point where you meet the Flood, I, like, knew everything that was happening. Yeah. I was like... I like Because I just replayed those sections over and over again. Right. Um, Because I think... I think I had something with, like, a CD key or something like that with the original Halo uh-huh. back when that was a thing. Yeah. Um, and I it would only let me play, like, the first couple of missions or something like that. So right. I pl- played the first couple a lot, but I think I finished the campaign probably three or four times in my lifetime now. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting getting to those levels and playing it with someone who's never played it before and seeing someone react to those moments for the first time. Yeah. Because so much of it is just, like, ingrained in my brain like i'm like oh yeah okay there'll be two like gold elites in there with energy swords and then seeing you run in never having seen an energy <laughs> sword before not knowing what that means yeah not knowing that it was a one hit kill yeah or and just getting decked straight away <laughs> and i was like oh yeah like that's that's you, what happened to me when i was like eight <laughs> yeah you were like dude what are you doing i'm, like, I'm just playing the game <laughs> like, i don't know what these things do like <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that was that was really interesting for me, at least, was seeing someone interact with all these things because the game constantly throws new things at you. Mm. Um, and then also, like, seeing your amazement at a game having a full vehicle level yeah. from 2001. What the heck? Yeah, but, like, like, that's just, like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, like, and, of course. And, like, in every, like, I'm just going to use COD as an example probably yep. a lot because I played too much of that. Um, like, in every COD campaign, there's a vehicle level. Yeah. And so seeing something that came out before any of that was even thought of was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like Halo paved the way for all the future FPS games or something. I, that'd be, but that'd be crazy. No, 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 no surely way. not. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. I did find really interesting, particularly in that vehicle level, was how much it still stumped us. Like 20 yeah. years later, we spent like 15 minutes. I had to Google it. We spent like, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we spent like 15 minutes driving around. We couldn't that's figure out what really to do. That's really sad that we had to Google yeah, it. Yeah, we had yeah. to Google something from 20 years ago. <laughs> how sad is that? And it's just like, because game design has changed so much. I didn't realize how much games held your hand now. Yeah. Until we were playing that. And I was like, there is no mission objectives. Like, because yeah. now it's just now you play a mission objective and the way the, the objectives work is it sends you like if there's a hallway and there's a corner in the hallway, it'll send you to the corner first and then the next waypoint will be at the end of the hallway. So you'll know to turn there. Mm. But in Halo, it just puts the objective marker at the objective yeah. and it just goes, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you find it. <laughs> and half the time it's not even like, it doesn't even have a marker. No. You just have to, find where to go yeah it's not linear at all yeah and it's like <laughs> what am i supposed to do like, yeah. and so much of the stuff looks the same that you're just kind of mm. like running around in circles you <laughs> feel like you are and then you pop out the other side and you're like oh oh it was right we were doing right we were good we're sweet <laughs> so many times frank would run off and then all of a sudden he'd like pop back and he's like wait <laughs> hold on <laughs> but, like, why are you uh, what? <laughs> yeah um but I, I really enjoyed going back to it with someone that's never played it before. Yeah. That was genuinely... Like, I've never played it through with someone else before. So it was yeah. really nice to just have someone there that was experiencing it for the first time and that I could see all these moments and, like, remember all the moments that I had doing the exact same thing. Remember how much you struggled with the hunters? Yeah. Yeah. And that, like, because now I just run up, I just go, boom, boom, and I'm yeah. done. But yeah. Yeah. Was it... Yeah. Was it interesting for you, like... What didn't you expect? Like, what was something that happened where you were like, "What?" I there's, there's so much I didn't. I just didn't expect to it to be like that well developed, right? Um, even like the open world stuff again, because yeah, w- as you said, there's always like a objective, and if it's not like on your mini map, it's literally in the world. Um, yeah, it's just go to the tower, and there's no marker on the tower. You just have to remember that you have to go there. <laughs> yeah, or like I didn't even like see those you know pop-ups or whatever and we'll, or people saying go to this place yeah like half the time i was just you know oh this hallway looks right <laughs> and it's like we're hitting enemies now this must be the right way but sometimes it wasn't the right way mm. yeah yeah i think the most the most interesting thing for me playing it with you was that you had no idea what the flood were and you no. had no you had no preconceptions and like like you'd never seen anything to do with them like this was 
which was it was so cool for me because I, yeah because i said to you like are these i was talking about the covenant i was like these guys called the flood because i'd yeah. heard of the flood before yeah but i didn't like i i'd never seen them before i didn't know they were in halo i thought it was just the covenant in halo. yeah and then for 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 you for me to see you realize that the whole tone of the game has shifted mm. and like everything has changed now and seeing you see the flood <laughs> for the first time like sprinting at you i was like this is so cool <laughs> like i i never thought that in 2021 i would be able to play the first halo mm. with someone and have them regardless of them having played it in the past before have them not already know like the mid game twist. Yeah. I no, I had no idea. It's really cool. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> and they're still so gross. I know. Yeah, they still haunt me. They're really yeah, they hold up really well. Mm. And then at one point we like switched to the cuz we were playing on the anniversary edition. Mm. Um just for quality of life improvements. Um but <laughs> we were playing on the original everything. <clears throat> but at one point we switched it over to the new graphics yeah. and immediately we were like, Ugh, gross. <laughs> <And they> just <laughs> went back. Sort of back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely like do agree now that I think it holds up. Oh, a hundred percent. It holds up so well. Hundred. I could play it again. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I made, I made, I tried to make you drive through the final level as well. <laughs> but yes. Oh, I was so bad at it. <laughs> but I can see, I can see like if you were doing it yourself yeah. at that point in the game, you'd be good at it. Yeah, hmm. you'd you'd be nailing it. Yeah, you'd be crushing it. Whereas, like, you drove the entire game until <laughs> up that until point. that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there anything else that you were like surprised by, or that you really liked about it? Uh, how actually how hard it was. Mm -hmm. That surprised me. I don't know why. It, like, again, well, I suppose as a kid, you kind of like I'm playing all these kid games from that era yeah but yeah it was way more difficult than i thought it was it really. is not forgiving at all no <laughs> it is brutal yeah which i think really helps like kind of sell the idea that you're like a super soldier but still very much human like you're yeah. <laughs> like if you make a mistake you are just gonna die yeah um which i really enjoy mm. what did you think of the story 20 years later like as you said, you know, I didn't, I didn't see that mid game twist coming yeah. at all. Yeah, it, it still has like, well, you know, that think about it, it doesn't really have that many plot holes. I didn't think. No, no. it holds up pretty well. The yeah. future games kind of retroactively put plot holes in. Oh, do they? Um, because they just like because the first game was just supposed to be a one-off thing. Yeah, and then they got asked to do a sequel and they kept, they ended up making it a trilogy. Yeah. And then now they're like, oh, we're going to make more money. So they've now done four, five, and now they're doing infinite. So they, they've kept building on it. And then the amount, they've just kept building on the law and building and building and building. Mm. And then now it's at the point where like the first game is like a peanut. <laughs> and then the next game is like a forest. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. It's completely different, but, um, I'm definitely keen to play through some others with you as well. Yeah, I'm keen to keep going. Particularly just the trilogy plus ODST, so 2, 3, and ODST. Because mm. um, I think they're the ones, like, that's that's really for me. Oh, and Reach. Um, mm. Basically up until 4, because 4 killed the franchise for me, personally. Oh, did it? Um, yeah, it was just, there's a lot wrong with 4, and by extension 5. Mm. Um, and I think that the new Halo game, Halo Infinite, which is coming out next year somewhere, um, I think that's going to bring breathe life back into the franchise. Um, but Halo Reach is the last one that's worth it. But basically, Halo 1 through 3 is all Master Chief. So that's like his story. Mm. And then Halo 2 gets really funky. And then Halo, Halo 3... Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then Halo 3 gets super funky with the story. Mm. Um and Halo 3 has one of my favorite stories of yeah. all time. It's really, really cool. Um, and then ODST, um, you play as like sort of like the Marines of the world. Mm. I can't really remember the story of that one um, super closely, but I remember it being really good. That's more like a COD game because you're not a super soldier. You're just a dude. Yeah. Um, and then Halo Reach is my favorite Halo game of all time. Oh, really? I have played that game over and over <laughs> and over and over again. Oh. Um, it's a prequel to um, the main story, and it follows the Noble team. Um, right. And 
they in universe and you find this out during Halo two and three, I think. Um, but they die. Um, and they like died protecting something very important. Mm. Um, and it's really interesting because throughout the whole game of Reach, you know that they're gonna die. Uh. And it's a really, really interesting game mechanic because as you're playing, you you know that your choices still matter. Yeah. You know that the story still matters because it has a larger impact than just the game that you're playing. Mm. But it's really interesting playing through a game knowing that at the end your character is going to die. Yeah. Which I really enjoy. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm really keen to play through those with you. I am as well. Um, I still have to get Halo 2 somehow. I don't know yes. how I'm going to do it yet. Um, because I'm mm. still not... Because so, Halo 2 only came out on the original Xbox, not on the 360. Ah. Um, so I'm not sure if I can get it for the Xbox, put it in the 360, if that'll work. It should work, but you know how it is with backwards compatibility. Mm. And then on top of that, whether the Halo 2 on Xbox has split screen co-op. True. Um, and I've been trying to research it and I cannot find it. So I think I'm just going to have to buy it for like 10 bucks and then hope for the best. Yeah. Um, but worst case, I'll just get the Master Chief collection and just mm. do it that way. But whatever. Anyway, um, is there anything else you want to say about Halo? Before we uh, move on? I don't know. It just, yeah, it just blows my mind how like how good it was mm. and how much I enjoyed it as a 20 year old you know yeah it's also yeah it's such a fun game to play with another person yeah mm. the library level is still too long oh yeah it's so long that was that <laughs> it's like 45 minutes of just alright <laughs> cool yep uh huh <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, dadum, like, dadum, dadum. yeah we got like 20 minutes in we're like okay <laughs> I'm ready now yeah that's this is enough this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then, moving on from Halo. Mm -hmm. And then, the next day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So we played Halo the day, uh, the afternoon when we finished film, yeah. filming. Film filming. Finished Finish filming. filming. And then the following day. Yeah. And then the following day, I downloaded this little, little game. I don't <laughs> think anyone's heard of it. Um, <laughs> called Hades. Yeah. And... I was playing it and I, I, Joe watched me play the first like 15. I wasn't sure I was going to like it mm. was my first thing. I said to Joe, I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this game. Yeah. Um, and so I played the first like 15, 20 minutes and Joe was watching and <laughs> Joe was like, I have to play this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to play this as well. So we set up Steam library sharing. Mm -hmm. um, he downloaded it on his computer and then... I turned off my internet so that he could start yeah. it and I could play it as well on my computer. <laughs> Cheeky little uh, cheat for you if you want to play the same single player game mm. on Steam Library. Um, but, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was, we we started playing it at probably like nine in the morning. Yeah. And then suddenly it was 6 p.m. <laughs> and like, <laughs> no idea where the day went. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's true. <laughs> but it yeah, that game we thought was so like little and just had nothing like happening in it. Yeah. There was nothing to it. Yeah. Little did we know. Yeah. Yeah, cuz we were like playing and I was like, "Oh, I'll be done with this in like a couple hours." Like this is a yeah. small game. And then nope. Uh mm -hmm. I just f escaped. So it's like all about escapes. You're trying to escape hell. Mm. Um, and it's a roguelike. So whenever you die, you go back to the start. You keep, it's a roguelike, not a rogue, rogue light. Um, and so you keep all the stuff, some of the stuff that you built up and you get stronger and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, and everything's randomly generated as you play. Um, but I, it took me about 20 hours before my first escape attempt. Right. And yeah. that was, I, I think I escaped on my 28th attempt. You got out? Yeah. Okay. So, damn, that's a lot of time. Yeah, and I'm still not technically done. The game does not finish when you escape. No, is uh, was my uh, a great surprise for me. <laughs> um, so I was like, cool. Once I'm done, I can put this game down and uh, do something else with my life. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't actually. Surprisingly, that's crazy. Yeah, no. Uh, who would do that? Yep. <laughs> but uh, it is. It's phenomenal. Um, it's made by Supergiant Games. They also made games. Uh, they made Bastion, 
which I also played a very long time ago, but I was probably a bit too young for it. I think I played a couple hours of it and stopped. Um, they made a game called Transistor. Um, they've made one other game, but I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> and they made Hades, and Hades is their latest big release. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of things I learned about Hades. Yep. Um, it was... It is currently the number five top-rated game on the Nintendo Switch. Oh. Um, it is above several Mario games. Really? It is one step below Breath of the Wild, the latest Zelda game, mm. um, which is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy high. <laughs> um, and it is still on the top sellers list on Steam. Um, Jeez. So it is... Well loved by many, many people, and I don't know why I thought I was better than everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's talk about it a little bit. Okay. okay. Uh, what 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 are your thoughts on Hades, Joe? It was addicting. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It. I just can't believe how much more there was to it, mm. and and it takes you like what half an hour to get to the end of a run. I did my escape attempt was twenty minutes. Oh, okay. The one that I got out. That's impressive. Speed run. Speed run. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to say that. I think I did it in 25 minutes. Yeah, speed run. <gasps> gang, gang. You win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's hard, right? Yeah. I don't know how I would describe it either. I think I'd, I, I'd, it's a really good mix of a lot of things. Mm. Um, it's super strategic, so you can't just button yeah. mash your way through. Which yeah, is how I died a lot of times at the start because I was just like yeah. <laughs> hoping for the best, um, and then the more strategic you get about it, the better you do. Yeah, and it also means that you have to understand the in-game systems of upgrades and how things work, and you know which which upgrades you want versus other ones, and so there's it's it's way deeper than it looks because mm. at first I was like, oh, you just get random upgrades, this sucks, like I yeah. I'll have no control over what I do, but then you get to like you figure out kind of what each person who gives you upgrades does and then you know like kind of which which people give you which upgrades and Mm. which ones you actually want and which ones you don't and so you get this whole like choice of of where you want to go which i think is really cool yeah yeah Uh, something that surprised me as well is like the when you have when you're in a room with lots and lots of enemies you don't have like a lot of games will have, you know, an exclamation mark pop up or something when they're going to attack or like the Spider-Man game, you have Spidey senses yeah. or whatever. But th- this game didn't have it at all. Yeah. There was like very subtle things that that character would do that you'd like, oh, I know they're about to attack me now. I need to get out of the way or yeah. whatever. You actually have to learn like yeah. attack patterns. Yeah. And so. you have to watch everything. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with the bosses as well. Mm. Like you actually have to look at them and learn what their attacks are. Yeah. Which is so cool. <laughs> and then you get to a certain point and they throw new bosses at you and you're like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start getting really far through it, then things start changing. Yeah. And you have different enemies and then more bosses. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. It's really cool. It is. It's cool. really, really cool. Mm. Um, yeah. No, I think that's awesome that like I haven't played a game that has forced me to learn in a while. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Um, something that I am surprised you didn't bring up mm-hmm. is the music. True. Do you want to talk a little bit about the music? I don't remember it <gasps> that much. It's so good. <laughs> it's so I good. I thought haven't played it since we, we spent <sighs> eight hours doing it. It is... It's phenomenal. Like, actually, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it won... Best soundtrack at um, oh. the Gaming Awards in 2020. I'll have to listen to it again. I don't really um, remember it. It's crazy. And it's all like, it all loops and stuff. It's really it's really cool. De- definitely listen to it. But yeah. I, I don't have the knowledge to talk about it extensively. But yeah. <laughs> it's really good, is, is okay. my professional opinion. I, I remember it being really good in the first world. But then after that, I was... See, I think that, I think that um, to me... That's something that tells me that a game's so good is that I wasn't paying attention to the music. Yeah. I was so engrossed in this game that yeah. I couldn't tell you whether the music was great or not. <laughs> it was all just it all in that yeah, that's exactly what makes it so good. It all blends into just one experience. Yeah. Like it and it's not like like some games you get really immersed and you it's like like the Batman Arkham games. Mm. You're like you feel like Batman. Yeah. These are not that. You don't no. feel like the main character. 
you you definitely still feel like you're controlling the main character, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Like you're li- you're just kind of there mm. in the world and you're just so engrossed in what's happening and you're just like, you know, square eyed, just staring yeah. at it. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I haven't had anything like that in a very long time. Yeah. It, it's like all the best parts about fighting games but w- yeah. without being a fighting game. Yeah. Mm. No, I loved it. It was it was epic. Also, the art style is just oh, see that's what I paid attention to. Yeah, so nice. all the art is just it's beautiful. Mm. It is beautiful. Meg makes me feel things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been giving Meg all my nectar. <laughs> <laughs> also, fun fact: I don't mm. think you know this. Turns out there's a dating sim like in the game. Really? Like if you give people enough nectar, you can you you like date them. Oh my goodness! So <laughs> you and Meg? I'm trying to date Meg. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the plan. But she like hates you. She doesn't anymore. Oh, does uh, she start talking to you? Yeah, I've made friends with her. Oh wow! <laughs> Gave her enough nectar. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. It like completely changes the character dynamics. It's it, it is really cool. It's yeah, so much That's effort has gone into thing it. To like testament to this game. Yeah, There's so much more. There is so much going on. It is crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, big, big, big recommend. Especially now, it's super cheap right now. Mm. So good boy. <laughs> um, I. I I remember being like overwhelmed with the colors as well. Well, not overwhelmed, but like it was so pretty. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't. I so I wasn't overwhelmed, but it was all like so colorful. I think that's because we're so used to games being dark now. Yeah. So many games are just grays and browns. Like even Horizon Zero Dawn, which I would classify as like one of the more colorful games of the recent generation. Mm. It's still like mostly beige. Desaturated. Yeah. Yeah. And then you play a game like this that's by an indie company who has full creative control. And it's so vibrant. Yeah. It's really cool to see. I don't think I've seen a game like that in the current generation that is mm. that bright. Actually, no, that's a lie. Spider-Man has that as well. Yes. Spider-Man is also bright like that, mm. which I think is really cool. I don't think every game should be dark. I think no. that sucks. See, this is like... And even like Hades is a game that you would kind of expect to just be dark yeah because it's hell it's hell yeah but no it was so colorful yeah it's super colorful and i think that's kind of a common theme is that it subverts a lot of expectations Mm. um because you go into it expecting you know hack and slash combat and then it's way deeper than that you go into it expecting like a regular roguelike and then it's completely different you go into it expecting like a five hour game that you'll finish really quickly and it's like several hundred hours yeah um, I wrote a review for the Did for, you? for Hades. Wow, yeah. it must be good. That's how much I was invested in it. Yeah, actually, I'll I'll you I'll read it. I will read it. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> this is what I wrote. Okay. I'll be the first to admit I don't like roguelikes slash roguelites. Well, it's not off to a great start. <laughs> I've tried Enter the Gungeon, Dead Cells, etc. None of them have appealed to me. A combination of the art style, gameplay, and loss of progress always seemed to push me away. But after seeing all the love Hades received last year and having a spare $30 in my Steam wallet after a refund, I decided to give it a shot. After playing for 15 minutes, I was instantly hooked. I'm a massive Greek mythology nerd, so immediately seeing these gods come to life and being able to participate in their story was incredibly appealing. And after my first run, in which I died in the third or fourth room, I switched weapons and went straight back in. On the surface, every aspect of this game pushed me away, but the second I started playing, it sunk its teeth deep into me and hasn't let me go for the past four days. The combat is quick and snappy, but not random. It forces you to be on your toes and think about every decision. As easy as it is to button mash, you'll be surprised as to how quickly you'll die employing it as a strategy. The boss fights are few, but I'll be damned if they're not satisfying. I struggled on the first boss for mm-hmm. hours, and being able to go back now and blast through them in 30 seconds is one of the most satisfying gaming experiences of the past year for me. Yeah, like, we we spoke about the Meg fight more than any other fight. Meg. <laughs> Meg. <laughs> If you're looking for a game with a gripping story, fantastic voice acting, beautiful art design, fluid combat, challenging bosses, and an ending that forces replayability so you never put it down, Hades is for you. If you've got a lot of spare time or none at all and can only play in five minutes bursts, this is ideal. Get it at full price, play it forever, you won't regret it. Mm. That was my review. Love it. Yeah. I was very happy with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Meg. Meg. <laughs> yeah, that first boss fight, oh my goodness. It's Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It was... It was the most difficult one, which is so I strange. think it's because you're so under-leveled at the start. Well, except for the very last one. 
Oh, I haven't got that far yet. You have. You haven't beat it. Oh, you got that. as in the the two dudes. No. I oh, you haven't gotten past that. I yet. didn't know. The oh. furthest I've gotten is to them, and I died. Yo, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it what? What comes after that? Is there more rooms? No. Just those sort two. Of. Yeah, and no. There, actually, no. There are more rooms. There's like one more section that you have to go through. So right after, I'm going to talk spoilers for like the next two minutes. Um, it's been out for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, but just in case. Yeah. Um. So after you beat, um, Theseus and the Minotaur, yeah, you the go. Bull of Minos. Bull of Minos. Yeah. Uh, you go through the door and then you end up at the River of Sticks. Um, uh, okay. And then Cerberus is guarding the door. There's to the right is like a big big shop. Um, yeah. Where you can there's like six items for sale. Yeah. On the left is five rooms. Um, That's right. In one of those rooms is the key to get through Cerberus. It's like a big bag of meat, basically. Right. You give it to Cerberus and he pisses off. Yeah. Um, so you've got to randomly choose these rooms and in one of them, the it's in, in there. Um, but there's enemies in there? Yeah, and the, some of them have boss fights. and some, so Sometimes you can get really lucky and get it on your first shot. Mm. Sometimes you can get really unlucky and get it on your fifth. Right. And already have like used two of your death defiances. So it's like super, super duper crapshoot. Yeah. Um. And then after that, you give the bag to Cerberus, you go through that door, and then that's the Hades fight. Uh, and then you beat Hades, and then it goes into the... There's nothing else after that. So what? how do you get back to hell from beating Hades? Does he just, like, pull you back? No, because you're, you're Hades' son, mm. you're bound to the underworld. So once you get to the overworld, you slowly start dying. So uh. you, like... You get enough time to like find your mother and talk to her for a bit. And then right is like, you start asking her questions, you die and go back. And so he's basically like, I have to go back. Yeah. And so basically you just like go back, ask her one more question, die, go back, go back. Oh yeah. How do you get to Olympus then and stay there? I have no idea. (laughs) I don't know. Oh, so I don't think that happens. Surely. I don't know. You, You have to do it now. You have I to do. tell me. I will. I'll keep going. I'll keep playing just for you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on from Hades. Yeah. It's fantastic. Definitely Amazing. give it a shot. Um, it's it's going to be something that I keep coming. I bought it on Switch so that I could play it like mm. remotely, which is actually really cool. So the last thing, the reason I bought it on Switch was because I found out that they have cross saves. So yeah. my save on my computer is the same save that I have on my Switch and it just uploads to the cloud both ways. Which I think is awesome. Yeah. So like now I can just, it'd it'd be like if I had a mobile version of the game and I could just run away with it. (laughs) I think that's so cool. Anyway. You need to go to the toilet mid run. Just, (laughs) I actually could because it's like if I, if you quit mid run, it saves at the start of that room. So Uh I could, I could theoretically quit, get my switch, get my cloud save and then leave with the switch (laughs) in the same room. I don't even have to finish the run. That's insane. It's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Really good. Mm. Go play it. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk about Red Dead. Go. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I've played so many good games in the last two weeks. I'm like, I wish I was a gamer. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't even know where to start. Oh, I found out it came out in like 2013 or something. No. When did it come 18. out? 18. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 2018. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, maybe that was GTA 5 that came out in 2013. Yes, GTA 5 came out in 2013. That blew my mind. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, October okay. 2018 okay. was Red Dead 2. Okay. Um, but so GTA 5 was probably like the most, probably the most elaborate and like interesting stories in a yeah. game that I've ever played. Which is interesting because there's so many better games than Grand Theft Auto 5. Yeah, but like there was so much going on. Yeah. And there was some, like, well, it's probably the biggest one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably a better way to say it. It's the biggest one I've ever played that's, like, kept me engaged. Right, like, the longest, but also the most captivating. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but <laughs> I've played more Red Dead in, like, three days and I, you know, played GTA in three months yeah. sort of thing. Like. You've probably already played the full length of the GTA 5 campaign at this point. <laughs> probably. So I finished I finished chapter 2 and I think there's six chapters. Yeah. Yeah. I finished chapter 2 and in 3 or 4 days. Yeah. Mm, so good. <laughs> and and the whole like See, you're explaining this to me like when you finished it 
a while ago and I didn't understand a whole lot of it, but like the whole, um, it's like the story never ends. Yep. Like in GTA five, he's like, I've done that mission. Now I'm in the free world, free, yep. free roam world or whatever. It's like, no, you know, that was just happened in this area. You're still part and of now, the world. And now I'm here and it's like, I'm going to help this person on my way to go help to go do this mission but I'm actually you know my yeah. brain's like I'm just going to go help this person or get this person yeah. out of jail It's there's I'm no gonna... separation between the free world and the missions yeah yeah and I think a big part of that also is that there's no loading screens between yes. between oh. anything how good is that like you just you walk up to a person and the mission just starts yeah like rather than GTA 5 where you'd walk in and be like you get like the little loading bar yeah whoop, whoop, and you'd just be sitting there staring at yourself in the screen yeah yeah. That's something that blows my mind as well. And like walking through doors as well, no loading screens. No idea how they do that. I no. no well, clue. they I think they do it with cutscenes. Oh yeah, like they just hide them. But yeah. Yeah, but. But they're all still in. Still walking through doors. I don't know how they do that. Unless the indoors are rendered already when you're outside. I assume it just would anticipate what you're gonna do. Like, it would have, like, a trajectory of, like, where it thinks your character's going to go. That would be my guess. I wonder if you, like, get out of mission, it's already got, like, <laughs> your path rendered. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're going to go that way. You're going to the to the saloon. Like, I assume it's just constantly guessing, like... Or it's just, like, a radius. You know, that. Maybe. That makes sense, too. Yeah. I like my idea better. <laughs> I mean, your idea is cooler. <laughs> <laughs> my idea sounds more futuristic. Yeah. And, like... Your attachments with the, the characters of the game? Yeah. Mm. I told you, you get so attached to them. Yeah. It's insane. And and my horsey? Yo, yeah. I'm attached to my horsey? Yep. <laughs> now, what's your horse's name? Echo. Oh, that's way cooler than mine. <laughs> Did you what know? Was yours? <laughs> mine was Lightning McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. But you get what I mean now by you don't want to sell your horse and get a better I one? I got the $15 one or something. <laughs> yeah. like the only one you can afford. Yeah. I don't want another one. I had that horse for the entirety <laughs> of the game. I'm I'm planning on keeping it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yep. You should do that. I will. Okay, good. <laughs> Just don't let it die in some other way. Uh, actually. Did you already have to revive I'm, your horse? Yeah, I, I bought it and then like... First time riding it, halfway out of the like the <laughs> town. I wasn't even out of the town yet. It died. What did you do? I don't. I think I ran into a coach or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is so stupid. It was something stupid, yeah. And it died. So I, <laughs> I, I didn't have any horse revive at that yeah, point because I yeah. didn't know what it was. So had to go buy. So I had to run back <laughs> to the stables. And buy some and then run back to my horse. I didn't kill my horse until like probably two hours before the end of the game. Like I was literally, I was riding towards like the final mission. Oh, really? And I just ran into a tree and killed <laughs> my horse. So I like had to sprint to town, get the horse reviver, and then sprint back. And yeah. I was like, wow, that would have been really bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good on you. Yeah. You, you get everything that I was saying now about it though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's so like, it's... It's so, yeah, you just feel like you're this dude in this place. Yeah. Mm. You get so attached to Arthur and the other characters. Yeah. Who's your favorite character that's not Arthur? Um, I don't know. They're all kind of like, they all have weird dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they're all actual people. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird. And they're not all like good people. No. In fact, I'd argue none of them are. Yeah. Then, Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Dutch at the moment? I don't know. Because at this point in the story, we're gonna I'm going to talk kind of spoilers, I guess, because now we're talking story. Um, so Skip to... Actually, just just <laughs> finish the episode now. Yeah. You know. We'll just talk about spoilers for the rest of the episode, I think. Probably. Um, so at this point of the game, we've just... Oh, I've already told you this like five times, but we've just moved camp because we got discovered yep. where we were um and it's really interesting because everyone's like also the crazy thing is it's like you know it's not just at the beginning of the game you're like oh this is a family you know like these all we all love each other but then at this point it's starting to like derail a little yeah, bit it's starting to unravel and they're like because the plan was to head 
west, I think, no, east, was to head east in towards like the cities and try and get away there, get just get away from the west. Yeah. And like first we moved from the mountains like kind of southeast and now we've moved and then now they're talking about it and they're like, why are we going south again when the whole plan was to go east? Why are we... Why aren't we running, you know, back towards the cities to get away from all this? Why are we going south? And yeah, it's a bit like now you can see that they're all different people and they're not yeah. just like all the same. They actually have differing opinions mm. on things. Yeah, it's really cool. It is very cool. I like it a lot. Um, what has been your favorite part so far? Because there's some really cool missions in that first like two chapters. My favorite like mission? Oh, just gen- like just general. My fa- like my favorite part at the moment is just the the relationship between like the free r- roam and the story. Yeah, probably. But like favorite mission. Oh, also like the ho- the horse riding in between places. Like I thought it would be really annoying. It's not. It's really yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really quite. Deep as I as I played more and more, I started using the like. Um, like the cinematic camera a lot more mm. to just like, so I didn't have to actually control it, but I never got frustrated by the fact that I couldn't fast travel. Even though you can, yeah. you can fast travel, but you can't till later in the game. I think though. No, you just set it, you put down a campfire and you can just fast travel to your waypoint. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> uh, it's honestly, it's better if you don't use it. It's yeah, that's kind of boring. Cause otherwise you don't get all those like random encounters and stuff. Yeah. Which I think is, is one of the best parts of the game. Yeah, I think so too. Mm. And like, because I've had things where I've, you know, I haven't been at full health and I've, <laughs> I think I got to a town with, um, where I had to meet someone or had to get, I had to get money from them. Yeah. Um, and I did something in the town. Like I ran over, I think I ran over like a squirrel, but it was in the town. So people <laughs> were like, because of the activity you've done, you can't do this mission now. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Um, so I just like went just outside the town, set up camp and then slept for the night and then came back and it was all good. <laughs> like, all is well. Yeah. All sweet. And just little things like that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love that. That's always really cool when a game like has those moments, I think. Yeah. Where you're forced to like do it, ma- take a different approach. Yeah. What I think is really cool about Red Dead 2 is you get a lot of options to do things. So there's like, there's a, mm. a part way later in the game where you like your stuff gets stolen by a kid and you have to like chase the kid. Mm. And the idea of the mission is that you don't chase, you don't catch the kid yeah. and you just chase the kid into like an ambush sort of thing. Right. Um, but you can physically catch the kid. And oh. if you catch the kid, you don't get ambushed and you just get the information straight from him and you get your stuff back. Oh. But it's not intended that you do that, which is really cool. Yeah, that is cool. I think that's sick. That is very cool. Um, so yeah, just things like that I really enjoy. Hmm. Um, you're playing with headphones, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts uh, on all the audio? It's amazing. It's so... Ah, it just sucks you into the game. My goodness. And there's like the music as well. Like when you're horse riding to somewhere and it just starts playing music and you're like... <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I feel like a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, look at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like it's it's amazing. Mm. I, you know what I found when I when I was playing it when I played for like a while in a row, mm. <laughs> I would be playing and then I would realize that I was starting to talk in my head in like the cowboy accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just like in my head it would just be Arthur talking. <laughs> <laughs> like ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> and like and I don't know if I don't know if, if like the their relationships is kind of like accurate to what it w- used to be, whatever in the West. How so? Like how they interact with each other. Oh yeah, yeah. It's most like and it's they've they genuinely tried really hard to be accurate. Right, and it, I can't believe it's super respectful. Yeah, yeah, and that's like that's the kind of stuff where it's like wow, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm so chapter three and four is where the game gets really interesting. Mm. And I'm really, really, really excited for you to go through them. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's just like, that's where stuff starts happening. Yeah. Like really, I would say that chapters one and two are very much the tutorial. 
Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And then chapter three, it opens up way more, and then you kind of have a lot more opportunity. But also, the story starts getting way more intense. So I would say, now chapter the start of chapter three, mm. if you want to do like anything side missions or like you want to get any of the hunter stuff and you want to go hunting and mm. like fishing and do all that fun stuff, do it now. Okay. Because there will come a point where that will become much harder to do for several reasons. The most important of which is that you're going to want to just blast through the rest of the story because it gets... Is that also because you'll be like wanted everywhere? Yeah, that and a, a bunch of other reasons. There's a lot of reasons that make it a lot more difficult. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Do you know how to get rid of a bounty without paying it? No, you can't. You, you have can't. to pay it. You have to pay it. Yeah. Huh. You can shoot the witness and then you won't get a bounty. Yeah. To do that. But you get you get a three hundred dollar bounty from a mission. Oh, you just have to pay it. Sad. Yeah. Oh, I thought you could wait it out. No, you can't, unfortunately. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh, that, oh that um, sucks. <laughs> there is one thing that is starting to frustrate me about the game though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> it's a it's how much they're talking about Blackwater. Yeah. Like it's it's at the point now where I know it's a what's it called where they it's a they're foreshadowing. They're not though. They're not? I'm dead serious. They're not. It never it it's 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 actually really interesting because this game is a prequel. Yeah. Um the so the Blackwater Massacre happened right before the start of the game. Yeah. Um they don't go back. It it's not the only reason they keep bringing it up is for character context. Huh. So it's actually not foreshadowing. Because I thought they were like, you know, they sometimes they bring it up, obviously at the beginning of the game to give you context. And then I would have thought by now that we would have stopped talking about it. No, it... it they don't. It is, it is really important, but not for the reason you think it is. Right, okay. See, um, I'm expecting us to go back and like shoot the place up and then win it over or something. Right. Um... So, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm really, really excited to see, to hear your thoughts on the last two chapters of the game. Okay. Because end of chapter four, start of chapter five, mm. everything changes. <laughs> <laughs> and right. it gets, it, I, I was, I finished chapter five and six in one day because I just, I couldn't stop. I couldn't put it down. Yeah. Okay. Like I was like start of chapter five, I was literally sitting there like, <laughs> oh, I need to finish. It's crazy. It's like the it's like the moment in Halo where you meet the flood. Oh right. Like that's what I would compare it to. Okay. That's that level of like what is happening. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really cool cuz like and I'll talk more about this when you actually get there. Hmm. But um I hadn't had it spoiled. Yeah. I had never heard anyone talk about it before. Hmm. And I had never even seen <laughs> like that right anywhere okay which is really cool so, i haven't had it spoiled either yeah which is why i'm very specifically not spoiling it for you um, i just know the very ending yeah but there's like, but there's yeah. a lot in between there like i i already knew the ending at the start mm. and i don't think it affected my emotional attachment to anything no and it the story was still just as impactful yeah which is really cool um, because I don't think that that specific thing affects the emotional weight of the story at all. Right. Okay. Because you'll 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 see what I mean, but mm. that's not the point. Are you yeah. playing um, high honor or low honor? Am I going for high yeah. honor? I'm going for high honor. Okay. Good. Because yeah. I did not know that that was a thing. Oh. Um. And so I finished the game with low honor. Oh. And uh, I really regret it. <laughs> it it doesn't change the ending that much. It's like like the the ending is the same just yeah. s- the way it happens different. is different. Yeah. Um but yeah, anyway. I want to be a good cowboy. Yeah, the good ending is much more fulfilling. Right. I think that the bad ending honestly it it made more sense to me. Did it? Yeah. So, I am one of the few that preferred the low honor ending, only right. because it felt more realistic to the characters. Yeah, because 
Yeah. They're, they're not good people. No, exactly. Mm. That's exactly it. Well, it's like, but but then you... <laughs> see, now I, like, go for good honour, a high honour, so I, like, I do all these good things. But that's the thing is, is Arthur wants to be a good person. So by yeah. making him good honour, it does make sense. Mm. But my issue... My issue... I'll talk a lot about that, my issue with the good honour ending once you've finished once it. it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we should finish up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We probably should. All right. Um, thank you so much for listening to or watching this episode of The Fro Show. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Joe, where can they find us on social media? Uh, on Instagram at Fro Media and on Twitter at The Fro Media. Dope. And if you want to give us money, head over to patreon.com slash The Fro Show. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Next week. Bye. 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 Bye.